Council, um, questions, queries? Council Isaac? Two questions. I'll just start with a simple one. The composition of the management committee under the federal contribution agreement, you outline the four members of that committee? Uh, through the mayor, uh, in terms of the, the, the federal side of the uh, co management committee, uh, that would be, uh, forgive me because I can't pronounce the name properly, uh, two uh, federal staff, one of them, uh, Menon uh, Badel, and uh, another staff person, uh, Hamid. Uh, he's a project manager with, uh, with Transport Canada. Uh, on, the, on the city side, uh, Dwayne Kalinchuk and myself uh, represent the city. Well, um, are the minutes of those meetings available to council and or the public? Um, we've only had one meeting uh, so far, uh, the, the, the one full management committee meeting. Two, actually. We had one by a conference by call, and then they That's were right. in the autumn, or in the Victoria area, so we had one in right. person meeting. Uh, in terms of uh, what, uh, providing the, the minutes uh, or the notes uh, to council, uh, Sure, we can provide them. That's that. no problem. Yes. Yeah. I have a whole series of questions written, scribbled in green pen, but uh, and I, the three of us over here are totally new to the project, and I read this entire binder mm -hmm. and appreciate your presentation and appreciate all of the work that's gone into the project thus far. Um, so I'll start with that, but. I have been, and I, I assume my fellow councillors have also been, kind of inundated with lots of information from the public uh, about can we keep rail, and um, is this the best design, is this the most cost-effective design, and so on. And, and I feel like we're on a really tight timeline with this 2016 deadline, and I want to understand for certain when I read through this, it says sometimes if we don't complete the project by May two th or March 2016, we may lose federal funding. And then later, it's we will lose federal funding. So I want us to build the best bridge that we can for the best value for the next 100 years. And I want to understand really truly how firm that 2016 deadline is and if we're curtailing our capacity to move in an efficient and effective way by a deadline that may or may, may not be firm. Through the mayor, in terms of the use of may versus will, uh, I guess that, that would uh, depend on when during the, the project process uh, we came out and reported to, to council and depending on the type of issue uh, that was being addressed. Uh, I think I'm, I'm uh, very confident to, to say today that if there's a delay in this project, uh, we will jeopardize the schedule. We will absolutely jeopardize the schedule and we will jeopardize the $21 million in federal funding for the project. So th th that's the Build Canada program. It does life out in 2014 and then there's a period of time you have to complete and to submit. So that, that's a firm date for the federal government sets. It's not just our project. It's any project across Canada built under the Build Canada fund. Right, but according to the federal contribution agreement, isn't that negotiable based on that it's not negotiable yeah. at all? Those are the firm dates of the program. Whether you believe they will or not. <laughs> if you want an extension to it, actually has to go to the Treasury Board in Ottawa to get an extension. The program does lay out at that period of time. <coughs> so it, it is possible then to get an extension? I think it's very slim chance. I, you know, the, the deadline is, is fairly firm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions from new councillors? Um, are, are details around monies paid out to MN, MMN uh, public record or confidence? My question is how much has MMN received? <coughs> to get an idea of the amount of design work that's occurred to date? Well, it's at least $200. It's been because transferred so far. We, we can find out there. Mm. Um, a second question. More process-wise, my understanding of the quarterly updates would indicate that the, the most recent quarterly update should have occurred in January rather than February, since the prior update was in October. Um, through your worship, he's right. The councillor is right. Part of part of our issue is 
capacity, and you know we we missed a, a short window, but you know we're working as hard as we can, and and we're committed to trying to get you the best information we can, and and we had to make the decision because uh, we were doing this for this group, um, we couldn't do both. I guess, or shall we? Um, just on the uh, pedestrian walkability of it, we've kind of done some emails back and forth. It was my understanding in October at, at the Victoria West Community Association, the residents seemed to be, felt that they were there to contribute um, to the design. Now I'm seeing it's public realm. So when, you, when, you, when public realm is mentioned, what exactly does that entail? Because their concern is about the new ro the new intersection that's apparently we're changing the approach to the Ocean Point Hotel, wh where we've added, is that a temporary intersection or is that a new intersection? There's lots of questions surrounding the access to the car lot. And it, the residents are feeling that they haven't been able to participate in that discussion. So there hasn't been the engagement to this point, and I'm just wondering what you're referring to and how, how much of the design that I've seen that you've shown can be adapted at this point with citizen engagement and input. Uh, through the Mayor, in terms of the, the engineering design for the project, um, there are a number of elements uh, that um, have to be uh, designed and planned uh, that don't allow a lot, of, a lot of flexibility in terms of the alignment the bridge crossing itself, how uh, approaches uh, from either side uh, connect with the actual bridge going over the harbor, how those intersections uh, are configured uh, on either side, where the curbs are, uh, where the sidewalks are, um, the fact that we do have to signalize uh, this one open harbor as, as part of the project, uh, and uh, provide uh, through a portion of that underpass the S curve a, an access to the Delta Hotel and that's because the ramp that is coming off the bridge now on the west side going into the hotel will be eliminated it will be as, as, as part of this work so it's it's incumbent upon the it's incumbent upon the city to uh, uh, because we're taking access away an existing access with this project uh, we have to replace the access uh, to that business. So it's we're we're we're, we're providing a replacement. We're not adding to. Uh, it's it's we're having to to, uh, uh, to provide the access because we're taking it away. So actually, if you look at this uh, this overhead, it does show uh, on the left hand side is the intersection. So that's the access to the hotel. That's the access on the other side. So it's just a realignment of an existing intersection. There's not a new intersection being created. Uh, there will be a set of traffic lights to do two things, certainly make it safer for pedestrians, for the, the, for the vehicles, and then also it, it'll provide a traffic calming <coughs> to, uh, to minimize the speed of people going over the structure. I have already heard lots of people comment on the, the commute into the city from Esquimalt and Victoria West, that adding that light at that so close to um, Tai, people are questioning why it wasn't discussed or entertained that the entrance to the Ocean Point Hotel would be at Tai. So well, that they're just feeling that. Yeah, two, two points. First of all, they have a legal access there. You, you know, if if you remove an access, you can be liable if you affect their business. They, so they do have some rights. The other thing is you can time lights such that uh, there's a number of things you can do. You can provide more advanced green for the peak period. You can actually have the the traffic uh, coordinator actually favor more. So certainly when it comes to commuting and flow, this will not in inhibit. You can even interconnect it with the other set of lights if you want a green wave. So there's a lot of technology that could be introduced to, to minimize the impact. So really, if anything, it should be a lot safer and flow a lot better than it does today. In particular, if you look at the temporary signal we have in there now, uh, you know, it's there for safety purposes, but that is a bit of an impediment when we get the cyclists and pedestrians. So when we're finished, it'll certainly improve the situation. Uh, was shortening the span of the bridge a major scope change? Through the chair and over. Uh, 
navigation span? Yeah, the navigation span in the summer. Was that a major scope change? It was not, because before we started design, mm -hmm. we confirmed with Transport Canada what was the appropriate span. Mm -hmm. So that was done in advance of engineering. Mm -hmm. So that's not a scope change. The problem that happens mm -hmm. is if you, if you have to appreciate how much work it takes to design something. Mm. And to design a bridge is complicated in itself. Mm. To design a movable bridge is like high school. And to <laughs> design an iconic movable bridge is like doing a PhD. Mm. And once you're into that, when you start changing the loads on it, and you start changing the function for it, you're into a massive, massive redesign. So we have, for at the moment, for example, we've got three three-dimensional models of this thing checking out deformations, checking out stresses, checking out strains. And we would have to rebuild all of that and then go to different codes to see, can we live with rail loading, yes or no? So it's, I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's a huge change at this point in the game. So, you know, we've done the preliminary design. We're in the detailed design right now as we speak, we're designing this. And if you, if you change that, we're back to the, literally back to the drawing board on a lot of stuff. And that really isn't going to fit with the current schedule. So the idea is we need to have a contractor on board in October of this year. To do that, he needs a design to put his, his money up against. And he's going to go through that. And he's going to look at all the bits and pieces. And the contract, this is an internationally, right now, this job is being watched internationally. So we've got people from China calling us. There's a Danish, not a big Danish contractor interested in this. You've got an Austrian fabricator who's following this job. You've got at least five major contractors in the states looking at this thing. This is not a, this is not a, something you're doing in the backyard. This is a very, very high-profile project. For us to go back now and redesign, we will not have a contractor in place for October. There's no way. If you if you miss that October date he will not get his coffer dams in place to build the substructures. If the coffer dams are not in place by February 15th, you might as well write off a whole year because you've lost that six month gap where you won't be able to work. So you have the snowball effect by changing things at this point. Now at the uh, February 28th presentation, you'll probably get a feel of where we're at with the design. I believe the architect will be here and walk you through to give you a, an understanding of just how complex. I mean, just an example of the two wheels weigh over 400 tons, which is heavier than the rail bridge itself. I mean, these are very complex structures that they're going to, to design, and that's what makes it an extremely unique project. Um, you mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that there was a new crosswalk on the at War Street. Could you please show me how that is going to... If you go back to the If we look at, uh, at this slide, <coughs> the, the pedestrian deck on the south side of the bridge will come across the, the harbor and then there will be uh, a sidewalk that leads up to the intersection here at the store in Pandora. Then pedestrians, uh, if you want to stay on the west side of wharf and store, there will be a new sidewalk added on this island. Um, that's similar to what's out there today. There's no sidewalk there now, uh, and this is what will be improved with, with the project on the side of the oh, so, oh, Sorry, in addition to that. Yeah. And on the north side, of course, we have the multi-use trail that links Harbour Road, the Galloping Goose coming off of Harbour Road. There's an overpass here that will connect to the future Ian and Rail Trail, and that takes you across the harbour and also brings you to the intersection of Store and Pandora. So I apologize for being obtuse, so if, but just so that I can understand, so I can explain to residents. There is an arm that's going to be built that goes underneath, but the um, walkway is a part of future budget projects. But what I don't understand is that if I'm walking, do you mind if I stand up? Because I just can't seem to understand this. <laughs> if I'm walking along here, and there's an arm that's going to go underneath, why couldn't it hook up to this trail on the other side? Okay. Do you want me to, 
I'll, I'll, I'll stand up too. <laughs> 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 well, I, just, yeah. I just don't so understand. Yeah, that. fair enough. So the the first of all, the, the city has a plan to in the future to build the harbor pathway, and that's well, and that's going to that's going to run along. I can't see exactly where the shoreline is, but it's, I think it's here. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. being built quite sm perhaps quite soon actually. That part of it. Oh, okay, and it's and I think it's also linked with with some development that's being yeah. talked about in this sort of stuff. The idea with that harbor pathway is that it continue north and follow the the, the um, the shore all the way up to right. connect to an existing trail. So that's all work that's currently not in the Johnson Street Bridge project. And the, the, there's no property available just yet to extend it to the north. So where are the people that so come off the bridge on the north side? Here. On yeah. the multi-use trail? Yes. Where Do they just so stop and that's no, closed? They, they no, they, they come right up to the intersection. They come all the way through here and the trailhead is right there. So there, but there's street. no way that that underarm could somehow hook up with that, the arm that comes underneath the bridge. Isn't that going to connect with that? So at the moment, and, and exactly how that's going to work, I don't believe has, that's part of the harbour trail connection. That has not been resolved. But, but I'm not trying to make it into a, I'm just trying, if it's going to be built, and oh, thank you for nodding, because if it's going to be built and it's going to go underneath, why can't it hook up with the multi-use trail on the other side so well, that people so can go under and yeah. then connect one the, to that. One of, the, one of the issues here, and I don't want to get into a really long detailed discussion of it, but you don't have the this, this space to go from here to there with an acceptable grade. That, that path would be so steep so that you would... So where are the bicyclists that are going to go on the north side of the bridge on that multi-use yes. trail? How are they going to get? It's too steep for them? No, it's this is end? flat. This mm -hmm. is flat. No, but if you're going to take the, the harbor okay. trail yep. is at elevation 5. Right. Here you're at elevation 9. So you've got a 5 meter difference between the harbor path right. and the path that we're building. So there's no way that they can well, connect? Well, they can't. No. The, the only way they could do it is if you built a ramp down there. But that ramp would be so steep that it really or becomes a, a serious safety issue. Or a stairway. A stairway, but that's not much good for your bikes or for people who are handicapped. Yeah. But it is possible to do a stairway. You it can do a stairway. You could do a stairway. Yeah. yeah. But that, that's, not in our, that's not in our project at the moment. But it is just a stairway would be necessary to make yes. it so that people could yeah. not have to yeah. navigate yeah. around. Yeah. A stairway <laughs> could be built. Thank you, Councillor Young. Um, it, well, first question, is that a scope change? Is what a scope change? Well, it's shown in the picture that, <coughs> that, uh, that and presumably a lot of the, the information that went out before the referendum is deleting it. Does that represent a, a scope change or not? Uh, through the Mayor, uh, there is no scope change. The project charter uh, clearly identified that the harbour pathway north and south of the bridge would be part of uh, future future works. It's not within the scope of the Johnson Street Bridge replacement project. And what's illustrated on the on the architectural rendering is a connection uh, that could be there in the future to connect to the future harbor pathway. But it's not it's not part of the scope of, of this project. So is this piece here going to be constructed? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. We'll go back a couple. Can you go back five? Yeah, stop. Okay. So my understanding, just what I've heard, is so we're going to construct this piece, yes. but we're not going to construct this piece. Yeah. have a harbor pathway trail on that side to connect to. So, okay. But isn't that what I just asked, that it could have a staircase at the end of it yeah. that could connect, so I'm not, could it yeah. not connect to the, the path, the, the walkway on the you upper level? You don't have the property to do that. There's a, there's because a we are Okay, well this is what I want to know. I want to know what yeah, we don't have. There's so no property there. We are right up against the Janion building property there. And the water lot. And so if you want a stairway, you're going to have to go outside of that property line to connect this up to Ward Street. 
and we are we are very we don't we, that's not property that the city owns. Mm -hmm. So the intent would be once that Janion would develop, you would work with him at that time to make that connection. Or well, there's no opportunity to build the staircase somehow. No, to no, the even city. even to get that that walkway, mm. it's it's over their water lot, which they are in the process of purchasing from Transport Canada. Could the city can just park another park city to, park just park to follow up? Uh, yeah. I know one of the big selling points of this bridge was the idea that, that this trail would go through the, the loop formed by the, the big uh, geared wheel. But just looking at the picture, it looks as if in order to achieve that, you're actually carrying these walkways a lot farther out uh, from the land than you have to. And I guess just looking at the, um, at the plan, yeah, I mean, as, well, as, as Councillor Gudgeon just asked, it looks as if there is a short, thick span going from the land, as there is now, going from the land to the place where the where the uh, the movable bridge begins. Um, why would you want people traveling north along the walkway um, to have to make a detour um, out to walk through the the uh, geared wheel when it seems much more logical that they would simply walk along a, a path much closer to the existing uh, land. So, and that's a, it's a very good point. In in what we did, in in order to, our mandate here is to is to account, is to um, to not preclude ideas for the future harbor pathway. That's the Johnson Street Bridge mandate. What we did is we met with the city parks in developing our path systems. They would like the harbor pathway, first of all, to be five meters wide so that it can accommodate mixed use. The sidewalk on the south side of the bridge is two and a half meters wide, as is the piece that you're referring to that runs through the wheel. So the intent there is actually to have the harbor pathway actually have a fork in it just on the other side of the bridge outside of this picture where there would be a separate structure carrying the harbour pathway underneath the east approach of the new bridge. And for those who are interested, they can take this detour through the wheel. But that the, the actual harbour pathway parts of that are not in the scope of this project. But it's not precluded. So it's a detour through the wheel. It's a, well, it's a nice walk through the wheel. So at the time, is the intention to is the intention to so you could actually at this time when it's finished walk here, stand here, and watch all the ship building happen? Yeah, absolutely. As opposed to stopping you on the other side where you can't watch. Right. The ship. Okay. Right. okay, so you actually could come here. Okay, thank you. And the design, and sorry, the, the design would accommodate the future. So all the loads and so have been calculated. That accommodates the future addition of that piece of the wall. Thank you. Uh, one of my colleagues commented about uh, all the summary and, and I think each piece we had to read, you know, a binder of this size mm -hmm. and I think, and uh, so through the years I'm, I'm thinking of the things that uh, haven't been added uh, to this quick summary. Mm -hmm. And I know um, one of the uh, presentations we had actually showed uh, the bridge lifting and the wheel and going. Do you, I, I guess you don't have that somewhere in the. Because I found that was to see it all in motion and to actually feel yeah. yeah. how it would work. It was very beneficial so when we were. That video is uh, is on our project website, yeah. um, so it is, is certainly accessible. We can send you the the link to that. Okay, but you don't have it uh, right. Today uh, to show. In, in this presentation, no, unfortunately. I don't. Oh, um, can we go back to the shot that has the rail corridor? Sure. Um, it's just a two-pronged comment and a question. Um, when, if and when this railway is built, where would the where would the pedestrians actually walk? If we're contemplating a building that would go right up to the edge of this corridor, we would basically 
I can't envision, since we'd be eliminating the pedestrian path that's just being built, where is it envisioned in the long term? Where will pedestrians go? And how is it sustainable if we're going to have a train butted right up against a commercial residential so building? And what they do is, see this pedestrian path here? Yes. The rail goes there, right. and the pedestrian path goes on this side. So the rail corridor would actually move to the So there. actually, if we would disconnect this pedestrian path on this side, move it to this side. So what happens for the pedestrian experience is you're removed away from the rail running and, and dropped down below, oh. as opposed to now being sandwiched between. So the corridor itself is actually to the so north. So, so it actually, it would move that way. But this is the one that's preserved, but it would move that way and it moved that way and it would come through there. a little bit through the wheel. It doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't start anywhere. It's, it's a little swimming deck. Yes, so yeah, that's it. Points to one of my, my comments. Last question is, I'm not sure if there's really an honest intention in the city, and I'm not attributing it ill motives to anyone, but I don't envision how rail is going to be pursued if it's not accommodated on this existing bridge. I think this is a pie in the sky to think that in 35 years, when like I don't see a, a willingness amongst taxpayers to build an entirely separate bridge at some point, particularly since economic crises and public finances, I don't see getting any better. So um, Michael McGonigal is a professor up at the university who talks about how the window is closing for public bodies to undertake ma major infrastructure projects. And so we have to seize the opportunity now to build infrastructure for the future. And I think that's what this discussion has to be about. I'm just going to read from a letter. Yeah, so I'm going to read, but um, to be honest, like um, I think, I really hope that we've contracted m and and that our own staff, we need technical advice. The policy questions, the political implications, even the risk of losing $21 million in funds are political questions that the nine of us are going to have to bear the consequences of if we make a bad decision. Certainly, staff should take that into consideration. Can I make sure all the questions are done before we get into... Certainly, yeah, I'm not going to give a proposal. This is a question to M&M, since we are contracting this firm um, based on their expertise, which I don't have. That's why I'm not the one designing the bridge. And it's from a letter from July 14, 2009, where M&M proposed that it could build a bridge with substantial completion by March 31, 2011. So that was a window of about one and three quarter years, or 21 months. So if a bridge, and including this was an architecturally significant or iconic superstructure for $63 million. So not to mention the fact that it's $14 million less than what we're contemplating now, this was a bridge that was going to be built in 21 months. And this would suggest to me that if we do direct our staff and m and to pursue a major scope change to ensure the bridge is strong enough to accommodate rail, whether it's a streetcar running in 2016 or whether it's a light rail train five years later, just ensuring this bridge is strong enough and meets the code for rail rather than simply the code for highways, that that, that m and m as promised in this letter of July 20, 2009, in trying to bid for this work, which it has now received, should be able to deliver us that bridge in 21 months. If something had to give, I would say tone down the iconicism and the architectural significance to ensure we have a functional bridge which meets the indicator of success in our project charter of improving I, improving that, amenities. I'll just I, to conclude, though, just yes. to conclude that uh, one of our indicators of success and one of the foremost indicators is improving alternative transportation amenities. And I don't see how spending $77 million to end up with a bridge without rail is meeting that indicator of success. Well, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll start by, by going back to what I said before to you, that before you start a project, there's a lot you can do. Mm -hmm. As that project continues, your opportunities get smaller and smaller and smaller. And at this point in this project, we have a situation where we are in the shoot. We are literally in the shoot on this thing. If you stop this now and you change direction, which is what you're suggesting, you are going to have a very difficult time finishing this for March 26th. But if you could do it in 21 months, so, so why can't you do it in four years now? If you want to do this in 21 months, mm -hmm. which is what you told me that. I didn't yeah, say yeah. that. I, I was just... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. 
If you want to, if you want to complete this in 21 months, you can do that. But you are undertaking a huge risk. But you gave us that timeline. Your organization gave yeah, us that timeline. Yeah, fair enough. And you can do that if you're willing to take that risk, and if you're willing to give clear direction in terms of what you want to do. And if every time we do something, you change the direction, this is not going to be done until 2020. This is my first opportunity being at the table. And Whatever. I'm sorry that I'm late at the party, but voters yeah. asked me to be here on their behalf. Yeah. Yes. Well, part of the issue and part of the discussion we had, again, as Charlene said, is, is we could do it within the 21 months. That was part of the trying to get the $42 million. Mm -hmm. We recognize it would include both day and night, uh, and, and there was a lot of things that we could do to make that a timeline, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, but it drives costs up, right? You start working Saturday, Sundays, evenings, nights, the costs go up. So, to a certain extent, we could have made that, and if you wish, we could do it again. But again, there are huge cost implications, and, and those are part of things. So, that, that was what we, we had. Okay, that Chris, time. I would like to just and answer the second part of your question about the alternate transportation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what you're saying isn't quite correct. If you actually look at the use of that bridge, mm -hmm. more than 50% of the deck area is dedicated to alternate transportation. 